YouTube, what is up? It's Ryan Huber. We're back with another video. I've got an incredible guest today to talk about some really cool stuff. The worst marketer on planet Earth produced negative $7 in 70 days. Um, dude, why are you so bad at e-commerce? <laughs> I'm horrible at it. Horrible, absolutely terrible. But all jokes aside, Sam Maxwell here has absolutely done some crazy stuff in the e-commerce space over the last three to four years. Uh, currently has done 700,000 in revenue sales on a Shopify business in the last 70 days. Or is that 10K a day? Yeah, we're doing about 10 to 15,000 a day. Our best day so far was just shy of 30,000. Um, we're still doing drop shipping, which a lot of people think is saturated, it's not. Um, the only difference of what I'm doing now, taking a different approach, is I'm selling a high ticket product. Um, but I'm still buying it off Alibaba, using eight, um, air freight shipment, and I'm sending it directly to my customers, and it's getting to them anywhere between 12 and 16 business days, so it's not bad at all. That's amazing, because somebody like me, I mean, I tried drop shipping years ago, Shopify drop shipping, kind of like 2017, in the height of it, I think when it was hot, uh, did not do well. I've done some Amazon FBA stuff, also did not do well. Uh, but before we get into the Shopify stuff and these crazy numbers and reveal that space, let's talk a little bit about Amazon automation because I think that's something that's super hot right now. I got a store from you guys and your team a couple months back that has been doing some great numbers, uh, but has also had some hiccups, which I think is a good thing to talk about as well to give people the absolute truth about this space. Um, you know, there's a lot of scams out there. People are making good money, um, but there's also different risks and things that come along with the territory. And I think it'd be good to reveal some of the nitty gritty um, and not just the shiny stuff. So um, first off, for somebody that doesn't know, like what is Amazon automation? How does this work? So how it works is, is it's completely automated as it states. So if someone was to come to me, such as Ryan, he gave us an initial investment, which it ranges on the different packages, which I'll get into later on. But long story short, any of our clients literally do none of the work. From A to Z, we do everything for somebody. So someone comes to us, they give an initial investment. What that gets them is a fully automated Amazon store, which that means is within the first few weeks is the most work that's required for the client, just helping us set up the LLC, the Amazon account, business credit cards, and et cetera, which we will get into later on as well. If you need help with business credit, as you know, he's the guy for credit. We also have an American, American, amazing American Express business rep that can help people get instantly approved for American Express business cards as long as you have a 700 plus, plus personal credit score. But um, long story short, we run you a fully automated store. So what we do is we do the drop shipping business model where we have teams, we have an in-house team in Colombia and the Philippines. And what we do is we do all the work from product listing, product research, product fulfillment. We have a warehouse that handles all your returns where every two weeks practically you're getting paid out from Amazon, you pay off your credit card which we use for the fulfillment for drop shipping and the rest of the money left over in your account is your profit. Um, we have a profit sh sheet made for you so you can see exactly what your P&L is, what you're selling, how much your money you're making and what your margins are and we take a profit split. So we have the incentive of you're comfortable because you only know we make money if you make money. So for example, um, we have a $20,000 package for instance you gave us $20,000, that is the only capital you're needing to come out of pocket up front. And the additional money that's needed will be used on your credit card for fulfillment. And we take a 50-50 profit split off the $20,000 additional investment off the beginning. And uh, projected ROI is about eight to 10 months. Amazon is a very long game. Um, people, you know, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Nothing is like that, no matter how good it helps they might seem. Um, and using a drop shipping business model, there are a lot of complications, which we'll get into as Ryan just mentioned. Uh, suspensions are a part of Amazon. So for example, Ryan had an H store, which is a lot to leverage. Um, having a brand new store, there's a lot more complications on how fast you can scale to avoid high risk. But for example, Ryan did what about just shy of 20,000 your first month with us? Oh uh, yeah, I think 25, 26,000. Okay. Yeah, 26,000 in revenue. So he did about 26,000 in revenue, but being transparent, he got suspended. Yes, so, I did. So and I that took about how long to get right you back? before Black Friday. But yeah, I was uh, very, very impressed. I got the store back online in three days. Three days during the Black Friday season. Um, and yeah, uh, I, was, I was very pleased that I got back online. But um, talk about a, a little bit about suspensions. What are, the, what are the absolute worst case risks with this? And then... Um, you know, how could you feel, make somebody feel more comfortable to get involved knowing those risks? Yeah, of course. So honestly, the only red flag and risk that there is with Amazon is the suspension. 
which if you get suspended while your store is suspended, um, you are not collecting any sales and all the money that you have on your Amazon account in that exact moment is on hold. Meaning the biggest worst case scenario that will happen is for example, you know, Ryan's store, prime example, if we didn't get it back in three days, yes, you did about 26,000 in revenue, but obviously a good chunk of that, about 90%, 85 to 90% of that 26,000 was fulfillment costs because margins average anywhere from 10 to 15% on the most part. Just being transparent, sometimes they can be up to 20, 25, but usually they're around 10 to 15%. But what I'm getting to is if all that money he had on the hold, for example, while he was suspended, if we did not get it back in three days, which that was an amazing situation, usually it takes a few weeks. Worst case is since you don't have that money coming in, obviously you have a credit card bill due. So worst case is if your store gets suspended, you're A, not collecting sales during that suspension time, and B, might have to float a credit card bill, but the advantage of us using an American Express business card or any type of business credit card for fulfillment is it will not affect your personal credit. Yeah, that's absolutely. a very, very big thing. But um, truthfully, the main flaw of the whole business model is you might get suspended. And like I just explained, that might mean you might have to come out of pocket some additional money, but it's a temporary t kind of situation. You might have to float, let's just say, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars depending on how much volume we're doing. But it's not like you have to float that and not going to get it back once we get your store out of suspension. Just like Ryan's, for example, all that money he had in the account on hold got dispersed right into his bank account right after you it got did. it back. Yep, yep, it got dispersed. So um, I like to look at it with a really good analogy because I come from the real estate space. I work with a lot of real estate investors. And one of the biggest issues in real estate is like if you have a single family property, a rental deal that you're holding, there's a possibility that, that tenant could leave. The, the property could have a vacancy or that tenant might not even pay and they're behind on payments. Now your cash flow stops. So I think that's very similar to this business model. So it's like if your rental property stops cash flowing for a month, two months, that could be your whole cash flow ROI gone for the year because on average, a good rental property might give you 400 or $500 a month in cash flow. So in comparison, the cash flow on this business is, is what, like three to 5,000 a month once it's fully scaled? Yeah, once it's fully scaled, I'll just say generally around the six month marker is when we really feel comfortable um, on doing more volume as in 50 through $100,000 a month in revenue. Um, and generally between those those numbers, we're netting anywhere from three to 5,000 in, in net profit per month. Yeah, exactly. Just so. the first six months, um, just being transparent due to you know drop shipping being a lot more regulated on Amazon, we got to take it with a very you know cautious approach. Um, starting off with a brand new store, it's a big red flag to Amazon. If out of nowhere, you know we rack up twenty, thirty thousand in revenue our first month live. Mm -hmm. um, you know if orders aren't being shipped on time or we get a few returns or yada yada, um, Amazon has the complete power in order to suspend us, flag our account. Um, so generally between the first three months is the biggest risk period regarding you might get suspended. The highest chance of you getting suspended will be within those first few months. So generally how we go at the first few months, the approach is we do anywhere from three to 5,000 in revenue, not profit revenue the first month, um, which obviously is not anything crazy, but obviously no one can expect you know us to give us an initial investment. No initial investment you know, you're gonna put into any type of business, you're instantly gonna be cash flow positive. Everything takes time. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you can almost look at it too as like a franchise because having an Amazon store is similar to having like a Chick-fil-A or a brick and mortar business. Let's say you own a Waffle House. I'm sure it might be more than 35,000 to put in an initial investment to buy a Waffle House franchise. But you know, that business could net three to 5,000 a month if you're a passive investor. So it's kind of cool because this Amazon store e-commerce model is like you almost have a franchise of an Amazon business. It's making you money every month. And I can you know, put up a screenshot right here on the YouTube video, if you're seeing this on YouTube, to show the 26,000 revenue my store did. Um, there might even see you know, where the, the suspension happened. Um, but yeah, any investment comes risk. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people either look at this as like a get rich quick thing and, they're, you know, and then they do buy it and they get mad because they're like, oh, I got suspended. And I'll, you know, but it's like, okay, you got suspended for one month, you lost out on $3,000 in passive cash flow, but then 11 months you made $33,000 profit, um, you know, without doing anything, which is insane. I mean, nothing else compares to doing this, which is really, really cool. So, um, it seems too good. To, it seems too good to be true. I mean, yeah. it's literally automated and yes, that might seem skeptical on people. 
Um, but literally, we've been doing this collectively with our par my partners. We've been doing this collectively for about 10 years. And uh, we have multiple warehouses. We have one warehouse, our own, that we use in Atlanta and a few that we're partnered with. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and we're not on a huge scale, obviously. I have about 15 clients right now, so I'm not some guru that collects everyone's money and I just care about the money. Um, we actually decline some people. We want to make sure it's a good fit. We want to make sure everyone's under the same impression and understanding that, you know, this is a long-term investment. And what I like to tell everybody is year two is truly where this investment pays off and where you're really starting to pocket that money and where it's going to pay off, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a good segue into, you know, away from what can happen on the bad end, you know, what, what could happen on the good end? Like what's, what clients do you have that are seeing really, really good results? What are some numbers that you've seen maybe in like a year two store that are just crushing it right now? Yeah. So I got, well, one example I can give you is I have a few clients that never got suspended. Obviously I have a few that have such as Ryan. I have a few clients that haven't got suspended and their cash flow positive earlier than the eight to 10 month mark. Their cash flow positive after month six. So that's phenomenal. That's a best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Best case right there. Um, but also some of our clients that are now a year plus in every single month, they are doing a hundred thousand plus in revenue since their store is now aged. The capabilities, which you have an aged store are kind of endless. Um, and we got clients now netting anywhere from eight to $12,000 a month, which is phenomenal, which yes, keep in mind, I did mention we take a profit split, but still if they have the 50, 50 profit split and they're netting 10, 12 grand a month, they're making what five, $6,000 a month doing nothing. So, um, yeah, pretty phenomenal. So they're making 60 to $70,000 a, a year, year completely exactly. passive. That basically replaces your full nine to five job. If you're a nine to fiver for what a 20 to $35,000 initial investment. Yes. And it takes 18 months, maybe 24 on the like worst case scenario. Yeah. That's yeah. That's pretty incredible. So, um, that'll kind of finish things off for the Amazon automation stuff. But if you guys are interested in that, um, you have some money, you want to get into this business model, DM at Sam, at the, the Sam, Sam Maxwell, Maxwell. The. at the Sam Maxwell, horrible marketer, awful person, absolutely screwed me over. That's why we're making this video. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, really cool business model. I'm glad I went with you guys and not somebody who manages a thousand stores or, you know, flexes Lamborghinis for their ads in order to sell this <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, I've known you for years. You're a genuine guy and you've treated me right. And even through the suspension, you, you guys got me settled and um, you know we're still cash flowing and making money. So really cool, really cool opportunity. And then, so tell me about the $700,000 in 70 days. And I think it'd be better just to bring up the screenshot, the yeah. live, not even a screenshot, <laughs> yeah, the live I'll, I'll refresh, refresh $700,000 in 70 days in the e-commerce space on Shopify. Absolutely, absolutely reckless. Silly man. Yeah. All right. So from October first to today, let's see here. So you quarter can hold it up to the uh, quarter to date. So IG live and then on the YouTube. Six hundred and ninety-nine. So I'm sorry, it's not seven hundred, but six hundred and ninety-nine, eight hundred. Somebody Venmo this guy three hundred dollars, so we can. I can't afford rent next yeah. month, so. So but um, um here we go bus. right here. Let me see if it'll focus. Yeah, try holding it in, like the center because I think the YouTube. There we there go. go. 699k and seven. Let me days. refresh it for you so you know it ain't not fake. There you go. Boom. Oh, there beautiful. we go. Alrighty. Beautiful. But um, oh, that was that's ninety four thousand so far this month. My bad, but you know it ain't fake. Look at my Instagram. I got folders worth of this shit for years. Um, but what I'm doing with this store, which I have two partners, um, we are selling a high ticket product. Um, margins about 30% right now. Um, over time, as we get better tiered pricing, we're hoping that margin will go up. But I have no physical inventory of this product. Whenever someone buys it off my store, I buy it directly from my supplier in China that I found off Alibaba. We ship it directly from our supplier to our customer, so I never have to see it. And um, we're running all different types of ads, anywhere from Facebook, Instagram, email marketing, SMS marketing, and also Google. Um, we're also doing a lot of um, phone, phone calls, um, reaching back out to abandoned carts. Shopify collects anybody that puts an uh, item in their cart and then abandons the checkout. It saves all their information, their name, number, um, address, what product they had in the cart. So therefore we have a cold calling team with customer service that's then reaching back out to them and closing them over the phone. 
Um, since it's such an expensive product, obviously most of the things I've sold in the past range anywhere from ten to a hundred dollars. I'm selling this for four to six thousand dollars, so it's obviously a lot different, a lot harder of a sale. But the margin is there compared to selling a let's just say forty dollar product. Margin after marketing is maybe you know five ten percent. Um, this is the craziest thing I've ever experienced, honestly, online in four years. True margin, it's absolutely insane. Um, but obviously, there's risk to everything. Um, with this company, you know, I did have to invest a few tens of thousands of dollars to really get it up and going. But just like kind of explained with Amazon, everything takes money and time. Yeah, absolutely. But um, we just identified trends. So throughout the year, especially around this time of year, around Q4, me and my partner is trying to find a product that we see trending. On Google Trends, you can type in an exact product or name of, or a type of product or whatever on Google Trends and it'll show you how it's been trending. This product that we came across, we saw it was inclining the last 10 months straight. So we immediately hammered it and now we're one of the top three companies in the United States running ads for it. So we just capitalize on trends as long as, as long as they stay hot and then as soon as the trend dies down, we collect our profits, turn off the store and then we list it on a marketplace online um, there's a few of them called like flippa.com, market exchange place through Shopify. And then we sell that business to somebody else and make that money. And then we keep reinvesting it year by year. So that's kind of So what you're capitalizing doing. on trends, making good profit margin, and then mitigating your risk by selling it and cashing out for a good lump sum. Yes. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wild. So if somebody wants to do this, what would you recommend for them getting started? Well... Kind of to go through my journey over the last four years, what I recommend to everybody is people that do know me, I'm a huge talker. I talk to freaking everybody, whether someone's next to me in Publix at the grocery store, I'll make a conversation sometimes with a random person just being nice, or maybe some random dad I'm sitting next to in a sauna, you know, I'll make a conversation with. I think the, net, the power- Dads in the sauna is key, guys. <laughs> networking, network with dads in the sauna. Yeah, hey, especially if you're in a rich area, you never know who they are, I'm being yeah. honest. But seriously, my number one recommendation is alone with no matter what you're trying to do network with everybody possible you never know what that person's impact could have on you or what they could give you or provide you with or the value through one conversation so that's one thing i recommend but also i've spent myself tens of thousands of dollars on courses mentors and i also just try to surround myself that by people that are doing what i want to do and people that i want to be like so, I mean, I do all kinds of stuff from networking, buying events, um, investing money into education. Um, and you know, e-commerce is evolving like crazy, so it's constantly changing. But a lot of people that are watching this, you've probably considered doing dropshipping before or Amazon or whatever, and you're just gonna continue to regret not getting started now. You gotta react now, you gotta get on it, even if it's not successful for a year or two, that's all part of the game. Being honest, I didn't make a ton of money my first year. I thought I did, but I learned about taxes, margins, and all that kind of stuff. So you gotta get in it at first to really learn. You know, you gotta get in the field. You gotta learn from your mistakes. It's all about trial and error. And I recommend you going on YouTube even alone. I call it YouTube University. You know, there's tons of free value on there. Follow people that do e-commerce, invest into courses, um, and just, you know, invest in yourself. You gotta put in the damn time. That's the first thing. Everyone's so freaking lazy. You can't expect results without working. You gotta have good work ethic and you can't give up. Yeah, absolutely. So you've invested tens of thousands of dollars in your knowledge, so maybe what, 30, let's call it 30,000. Mm -hmm. And then what has the ROI been on that investment in yourself? I mean, you've just made $700,000 revenue in the last 70 days, um, but what do you think, how much, how much money have you made off 30,000 investing in yourself? I've made, a few, I've, I've, I've made a few hundred thousand. I'll say that for sure. I'm not going to give that away. Obviously, yeah. I'm not trying to. We'll know. make sure the IRS doesn't watch this video. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm fully caught up yeah. on my taxes now. I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah. I was behind, but I've learned the hard way. Like I explained, you know, it's bit, running a business at a young age is not easy. But you, there's only one way to freaking learn, and you got to start. And that's the yeah, only way. absolutely. And I really respect how transparent you are and real about some of this stuff because. There's a lot of young entrepreneurs. There's a lot of people flex on Instagram. You know, I, I've done. Uh, I, we all flex a little We're bit, all to try and you know maximize what we put out there for sure. Um, but it's good to stay humble. And you know, there there are struggles. There are absolutely struggles. You know, people get behind on their taxes, or you know, their marketing fails, or their business fails, and, and things happen. So that's that's really really cool. So um, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely amazing what you've done in the the Amazon space, the Shopify space, and you're only continuing to grow. So. Sam, 
Appreciate you, man. Oh, of course. Yeah, thanks, course, thanks for coming course, out. Bro. Everybody on Instagram Live, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on Shopify, Amazon automation, how to get started in the e-com space, um, if you want to be a passive investor and just invest money into it to ver diversify your portfolio or your investments, he's your guy at the Sam Maxwell. Or if you want to get involved actively, learn the skill set, you could also speak with Sam as well, and he could point you in the right direction for how to get started actively. So with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in on Instagram Live. Thank you guys on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.